That's right, guys. The announcement wrapped up a little while ago, followed by two test flights. Now, our camera was inside one of those flights for a sneak peek at what is to come. The common theme at the SOAR Summit today was hope and a belief that economic change can and will come to this region. The question is, how? She'll say if you are outside and you hear those sirens, you should come inside immediately and seek shelter. My car's been sitting here for about 10 minutes without air conditioning on on an overcast day, and it's already 106 degrees on the deck. Steve, the fire started about 1 o'clock this afternoon. Officials say they had to evacuate a mile wide radius after they learned there were more than one ton of explosives inside the building. They say it started out like any normal day at Conley's Farm Supply, but before they knew it. Just all of a sudden we heard a big pop sound. A pedestrian pulled in and said the roof was smoking. It wasn't long before the whole building was up in flames. It got ridiculous hot. Even though the roof was on fire, it was just, it was amazingly hot. When employees realized nearly one ton of ammonium nitrate and propane was sitting inside, they knew they weren't the only ones in trouble. Emergency officials sprang into action. They just evacuating everybody there, and so I'm being on standby just in case. They cleared everybody out within a mile radius and closed the road, clearing out nearly two dozen homes while they emptied the flaming store of any explosives. Golf County is proud of our fire force. They're good first responders and they train hard and they train well. This is a perfect example of it. No one was physically hurt in the blaze, but they say the emotional toll is one they never expected. It's been a landmark here. It's been here for, uh, I'd say, since the turn of the century. Everybody around this area knows the Conley Feed Store. A landmark that is now nothing more than smoldering remains. Now, people are allowed to return to their homes. There's no official cause for the fire, but employees tell me they believe it was electrical. Thursday night was a night of remembrance for many in Mingo County. He was a good man. Um, he was trying to do what he could to uh, straighten our county out. Rainy weather didn't stop people from filling the streets of downtown Williamson to remember a man who impacted the lives of everyone he met. Not only was it best sheriff, but he was the best, best he was, guy. He was the best coming. friend and a really, really good friend. He, I mean, he, to the end, he was your friend. But the people of Mingo County have made a point to move forward, remembering their fallen hero by letting his legacy live on. Surrounded by candlelight, his his wife Rosie was sworn in as the new sheriff. Hi, Rosie Crum. You solemnly swear. Vowing to do for her county what her husband began. To the best of my skill and judgment, so help me God. So with you, God. Congratulations, Sheriff. <laughs> Leaving the people of Mingo County still mourning. But certain they can move forward. Now the vigil ended here about nine o'clock, but everyone I've talked to here in Mingo County today says Sheriff Crum will never be forgotten. Live in Mingo County, Whitney Burks, WYMT Mountain News. Decorations, twinkling lights, and presents under the tree. You know what time of year it is. But for many, the holiday season delivers more than gifts. Long lines. It's a little bit stressful. I'm running around with, like a chicken with my head cut off, <laughs> trying to get everything done for the holidays. Making sure you have everything to make the holidays perfect means stressing over the little things you might forget. Kevin! American Psychological Association estimates nearly 71% of people say money is their main holiday worry. It's just too much of a hassle with money wise. It's as far as bills and all that goes, and family's not family no more like it used to be. So if you're one of the nearly three quarters of Americans who say financial issues, like shopping for that perfect gift, are what stressed you out during the holiday season. Health officials say something as simple as taking a 15 minute break from all the hustle and bustle. Listening to some soothing music could be all you need to clear your mind. The biggest advice I give my patients is that it's okay to say no. They want to do everything they're asked to do, and especially when it's your family asking you to do this or do that. And before you get too overwhelmed, take a step back and remember what the holidays are really about. God bless everybody and Merry Christmas. 
in Pike County, Whitney Burks, WYMT Mountain News. It is a quiet danger that is lurking in the hands of a growing number of teenagers. We have had instances where people have sent graphic images over, over their tablets or their phones. Uh, and it got into the wrong hands. Officials say sexting is getting more popular among high schoolers in the area, but many may not realize all the problems it presents. When it goes to someone else, you remember, it, it's not going to be private anymore. They're, going to, they're probably going to share it and maybe try to use that against you. And that's kind of form of cyberbullying. One thing administrators here at Pikeville High School are telling parents to keep an eye out for are photo locker apps. Many of them look like calculator apps, but are actually used to hide pictures. One simple search for them in the app store brings up more than 500 results. It's okay to trust your child, but trust with verification. They say other apps like Snapchat make it easy to send photos under the illusion they are gone within seconds. Anything that's on the iPhone is forever on an iPhone. They can tell who sent you the picture, who you sent the picture to, uh, what picture was on your phone, and how long you've looked at that picture. And police say sexting is not immune to the law. There is no sexting, what to say, sexting law in the state of Kentucky yet, but uh, the way prosecutors have been doing, they've been using the uh, using the pornography laws. Meaning you could face felony charges with the click of a camera. In Pike County, Whitney Burks, WYMT Mountain News. WYMT's Whitney Burks is live downstairs with more on some of the ideas presented today. Whitney? Yeah, Stephen Neal, the common theme at the SOAR Summit today was hope and a belief that economic change can and will come to this region. The question is, how? Political leaders say it is an urgent situation moving eastern Kentucky away from relying so heavily on the coal industry. Some agree. Won't it happen? Yeah, it's going to happen because they're not going to dig coal in eastern Kentucky anymore, not like we did in the past. Others say completely switching the focus entirely from coal is maybe not the best idea. Coal is going to continue to be the largest single economic player in this region outside of government and it needs to be at the table. It does not need to see activities like this as going against its interests. But leaders at the SOAR Summit say this is just the beginning, gathering ideas and continuing to plan. The key, they say, is bipartisanship, which was evident by the two pulling the summit together, Democratic Governor Steve Bashir and Republican Congressman Hal Rogers. There are solutions in eastern Kentucky, but we're going, we're going to have to band together and build a critical mass of support to make change happen. A vision of crossing county lines, bringing the region together and moving eastern Kentucky's economy forward. 1,700 people registered for today's summit. Everyone I spoke to says they are confident change will come. Reporting in Pikeville, Whitney Burks, WYMT Mountain News. Born to be a trooper. He was very compassionate about his job. He loved it. He loved KSP. And he loved working with the public and helping, trying to make a difference. Even a small difference, he tried. Jonathan Leonard served more than three years with Kentucky State Police. He's very well respected and a very hardworking trooper. He's very committed to the community over here in, in Pike County. On December 19th, 2006, the unthinkable happened. Leonard died in a crash while responding to a call. It was a loss that was felt uh, all the way across our agency, especially, especially here at Post 9. Thursday night, just like every December 19th since that day, dozens gathered remembering the man they say left a lasting impression on anyone he met. We love Jonathan, but we were you know, surprised that so many people cared about him. You know, and their stories and stuff that they tell us helps keep his memory alive. Mm -hmm. you know, it means the world to us. Flames flickered and lanterns floated to the heavens. It's very heartwarming to see the, the support for the family and the fact that you know, Jonathan's service and who he was to all of us hasn't gone, um, hasn't gone uh, forgotten so long after the fact. It meant a great deal to us and, uh, and still does. A vigil that allows Leonard's memory to continue burning in the minds of those who knew him. In Pike County, Whitney Burks, WYMT Mountain News.